I love to turn something old into something new. So in this video, I am going to show you how to reupholster an RV couch. Before attempting this project, I would highly recommend that you watch this video all the way through for three reasons. To have the concept fresh in your mind, so you know what supplies you need. If there is something you don't understand, just ask me questions in the comments. In one of our recent projects, we converted a camp trailer into a tiny house. And this is what the couch looked like before I reupholstered it. Please check out our camp trailer to tiny house videos to see that project. Let's go over supplies you will need, and I will also post links in the description. You will need a sewing machine. If you're looking to buy one, this one is great. You will also need some thread for your sewing machine, some cutting tools, rotary cutter, scissors, a straight edge of some sort, a surface to do your cutting on. Um, this actually works pretty well, it's my quilting stuff. And then a measuring tool. You will need a stapler. I use the smaller one, you can see how it fits in my hand pretty well. The big ones are just too hard for me to use. And then you need staples. A uh, paint can opener works great for taking out the staples. If you don't have that, you can use a flathead screwdriver. That works as well. You may or may not need a hammer to help you hammer in staples. Make sure when you're picking out fabric that you do not pick out something with a pattern because pattern matching can make this really difficult. All right, let's get started. The first step is to remove the old fabric from the couch by removing the staples. You want to remove the old fabric as careful as you possibly can in order to use it as a pattern when you're trying to make the new one. You will see what I mean. So to start, we want to use this tool to remove the staples just by putting it under there and providing some leverage. And then sometimes you can just pull to get the row of staples out. If you don't have a paint can opener, you can also use a flathead screwdriver. That works really well also. Sometimes they come out easy, sometimes they don't, and then if they don't, you just use your tool. Okay, so I removed all the staples from the back, so then I can just peel this off. Hopefully the cushion is still in good shape, which it is, so that's good. So let's take a look at how they did this piece, the piece that I took off. This is the lower cushion and this is the upper cushion. And then they had the sides and then on the underneath side. Um, so they took this gunny sack and sewed it down the middle. You can see that right there. And so then this would wrap underneath the cushion around the base and they stapled it on the back and this same thing around the front so that um, the piece is kind of it's connected in the middle but yet the cushions can still um, move sitting up or laying down so i'm going to attempt to mimic this just gonna kind of <clears throat> oh yeah that's plenty so I want to be able to do this in one piece. Instead of covering the front cushion and then covering the back cushion, I want to do it as one whole piece. And by the looks of this, I don't think I'm going to have enough to staple on this bottom board all the way around. So what I'll end up doing is getting a contrasting color of some sort that'll look nice with this and staple that along the bottom. So before I cut this down, I have enough overlapping the back and I've got enough overlapping right here. I have enough room to sew the two pieces together, enough fabric there. I'm going to make sure you're, I do have a little bit of lines in this fabric so I want to make sure that they're straight. And I have extra over here on this side which is good because I'm going to trim this all along this whole entire side and I'm going to use that fabric for my edges. So I'm going to trim off 
this side. So the edge that looks like that, that's where I'm measuring from. And you probably want like two inches, an inch, two inches. Sorry, I'm not trying to flash anyone. So that you have something to sew this piece and this piece together. You need to have a little bit of extra fabric to be able to do that. So that's what I'm measuring right now to see where I need to cut this off. I'm starting right there. 11 inches. So 11 inches will more than cover that. So hopefully I have enough on the bottom here that will cover that side and then enough to wrap underneath. So I got my rotary cutter and then I also got a different shirt on because I'm not trying to, to flash anyone. I said I needed to cut off 11 inches. 11 inches. This side. Okay, so after I cut the end off, I'm putting the fabric back on the couch to see how much I need to cut off on the front. So you want to make sure you have enough to where you can wrap it under and staple it right there. So I have this much extra. So you just measure that just like we did before and cut that off and then we'll use it on our edges. Okay, so I trimmed off my edges. I have just a little bit overhanging on each side, which is good. And in the front, tack it down. Okay, so now you want to turn it over. And it's kind of like working backwards. Turn your fabric upside down. Make sure you have the right amount hanging over the edges. Right. So we've got a little overlapping on the sides and in the front and in the back. So next, I'm going to attach the edges and then sew them. Okay, so you need pins and my fabric is upside down, okay? And the edge piece is also upside down and we're going to meet together the two inside pieces and pin them. And where we pin them is where we're going to sew them together. Ideally, you want to make sure you have plenty of fabric so you're not cutting it close. So now we're going to go and sew this edge before we do the other side. the end piece. Now I'm going to flip it right side up and it's actually going to be on the opposite end. I just want to make sure it just looks good where my corners are. Put it back over so that we can do the other side. It's on the edge where it should be. So this seam right here needs to be on this edge. Make sure the corner, see this corner is overlapping. I need to scoot it back a little bit. All right, so now we're going to do the other side. Pull it nice and tight. So you just wanna make sure that you have enough overlapping in the back so that you can staple it. And enough in the front that you can also staple it. So I've sewn on both ends and so I'm going to make sure it fits before I cut the excess off. Just in case it doesn't fit, then I can at least take it apart and redo it. Fits the edges nicely. Fits on this side nicely. Okay, so I'm going to cut this off. I'm going to cut it fairly close because if you don't, it'll kind of be a, a bunchy seam, but not too close to where it makes the seam come apart. 
to do the corners. Corners are a little difficult for me. Okay, so I still have it upside down. Then once you do the corners, then you flip it over and then the corners fit. Okay. So you just kind of feel like where's the corner and then you pin it. Just wanna make sure it's tight. So my corner is over here. So you kind of bunch it till you feel your corner. I'd say corners are the most intimidating part of this whole project. And then you pin it at an angle. So we're going to sew at an angle. Make sure it's tight. All right, so I have it pinned. And then I'm going to take it off and sew it. I've sewn the corner. And if you just turn it right side out, it's supposed to fit that corner nicely. Not bad. All right. I think the corners actually turned out pretty good. I'm pleased with them. Okay, so I need to do the same thing with the back two corners. So I'm going to take this off and flip it over, upside down, make sure fits and then we'll do the gathering on the corners on the back side as well so I have all the corners done so I'm going to put it on right side up and make sure everything lines up okay I'm going to take it back off. I need to press these seams down with an iron and that'll help my seams lay flat and not pucker. Okay. So I need to sew on that piece that helps kind of attach the whole piece to the frame. So I have some denim fabric. Just use what I have laying around. Okay. Now I need to sew this down the middle of the seam right here. Now we need to take this off, sew that on. So I got my extra piece of fabric sewn on the back. So then I'm going to turn this over and clip the corners first so that they lay flatter. Okay, so by clipping them, you just go inward like that. This I'm gonna trim off because we don't need all that on there. And then do the same thing on that side. in the back, take this fabric in the middle and push it through. So we're going to use it and attach it to the wood frame so that it holds the fabric in place as you open and close the bed. 
or couch, whatever you want to call it. Let's see, it's working. Okay. That looks good. Okay, time to staple it in place. And now you want to staple the fabric under the frame all the way around on all sides. Once I finished the cushions, then I did the contrasting color and stapled it all along the base. The middle piece of fabric that we sewed onto the main fabric and tucked it between the middle part of the cushions, I pulled over this wood right here and stapled it and did the same to the back side, pulled it through and be able to lay down as one functional piece. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. You can comment below or send me an email. If this is your first time doing something like this, my biggest piece of advice to you is don't be afraid to try. Having something reupholstered is very expensive, Buying something new can be expensive as well. Get yourself a sewing machine for a lot cheaper and do it yourself. Hope this video was helpful to you. If you like my video, give me a thumbs up. If you want to be notified of new videos, please subscribe and hit the bell. Thanks for watching.